talk about congruent figures. So in this chapter, we're going to talk about shapes and how to move them and how to compare them and how to work with them and then information we can get from those shapes about some of the qualities that they're, they're giving us. So we're going to start with just, just simple shapes. We're going to talk about congruent figures. So congruent, basically the mathematical geometry word for equal. So they have to be the same. So figures that have the same size and the same shape are called congruent figures. The triangles below are congruent. So we have these two triangles. We name triangles by their corners, by their angles. So we look at triangle A, B, C, and we compare that to triangle D, E, F. Now matching angles are called corresponding angles, so they correspond to each other. So I could talk about angle A corresponding to angle D. Those um, angles are congruent to each other and they are matching. So they're the same degree. If I measured them, they'd have the same degree measure. Um, I could also talk about matching sides. They're called corresponding sides. So when we're talking about congruent figures. The sides that are corresponding to each other are also congruent and they have the same length. We measure our sides with length, our angles with degrees. You'll notice that the way I have these marked up so our angles we can identify with, with these kind of arcs inside of them. And here I have angle B has one arc in there. So any other angles that I see in this, in this picture that have one arc have the same angle measure. I don't know what that measure is, but I do know that any ones that have that angle, that one arc, have the same measure. So angle B and angle E are congruent and they're also corresponding because they match up in these figures. Same thing with our sides. Uh, so go back to our angles for a second. Notice angle A has two arcs. Over here I've got an angle with two arcs. Those two are congruent also. Our sides we can mark the same way with these little hash marks here. Notice side, oop, I've, I've unmarked these. Let's fix this here. So notice that angle, side B has two little hash marks. Any other side that also has two hash marks is the same length as any other one. So side BC, and we describe sides by their endpoints. So side BC is congruent and is corresponding to side EF. Okay, so when I look at a figure, I don't assume that just because the, the piece of the figure look like they are the same, that they are the same. I either need to have it explicitly told me in the figure or in the, some description of those figures. So we're gonna be talking about congruent figures two figures that are exactly the same as each other. They're the same size, the sides have the same measure, and the angles all have the same measure. We're not changing how big or how small they are. So if I'm given two figures, I can list those pieces of them. So the figures are congruent. They've told us they're congruent. That's how I know they're congruent. Name the corresponding angles and the corresponding sides. So since they've told me that these two figures are congruent, I know they're assuming they're congruent. They've told me explicitly. I'm a terrible drawer, so we're not going to go by looking at, well, they look like they're the same. We're not going to go with that. Um, and especially looking at these two triangles here, this angle F and this angle P, they look like they're 90 degrees, but I don't know that they're 90 degrees. They haven't told me that, so I can't assume that. They have told me they're congruent, though, so I'm going to name the corresponding angles and the corresponding sides by what I have here. So P and F our corresponding angles, so angle F and angle P, and this is how we write, instead of writing out the word angle, we can just show this little angle sign here. Um, it looks like our less than symbol, but when it's in front of a letter like this, it means angle. So angle F and angle P are corresponding angles. What else do we have? We hang, have angle G and angle Q, those are corresponding, and we also have angle F, H and R, those are corresponding also. So we have all of our matching um, angles, Let's talk about corresponding sides. I'm going to do the same thing that I did with my angles. I'm going to match them up. Now, I do want you to be careful with how you describe the sides. We want to pay attention to the order of the letters. So notice here I'm talking about side um, FG and side PQ. They're corresponding, but notice that I want to go from this kind of smaller angle to this larger angle. So I'm going to say FG, and then my second side, I want to talk about the, the letters in the same order. So I'm going to go from PQ. As if I flip this over and put it right on top of them, F and P would match up and G and Q would match up. 
So it's FG and then PQ. I'm starting kind of at the same place in the triangle. What other sides do we have? I have side GH and that corresponds to sides QR. Again, notice the order that I set the letters in. And we also have side HF and that corresponds to side RP. So I have three sides and three angles in each figure. I should have three angle sets and three side sets. All right, let's take a look at um, some more corresponding figures and how we can use them. So two figures are congruent when corresponding angles and corresponding sides are congruent. So in my first example, it was stated right in the original directions that those figures were congruent. Now we're looking at figures that are not necessarily um, saying they're congruent, and can we tell if they are congruent? So these two figures here, um, notice that how I've kind of marked them up here. So I have angle A has three little arcs, so does angle D. Angle B has one arc, so does angle E. And angle C has two arcs, so does angle F. So, so far we have very corresponding angles there. Let's look at the sides and see if that matches up too. So between B and A, between my three and one arcs here, I have one single line. That matches up here in my other figure. Between my one arc and my two arc, I have a two hashtags there. Between one and two, I have two hashtags also. And between my, my two angles that are the same here, A and C and D and F, I have three hashtags, I have three hashtags. So all of the corresponding angles and corresponding sides here are congruent. They are equal in size, which means that these two figures are congruent to each other. So can we tell that when we look at two figures? So let's take a look at one. Tell whether the two figures are congruent and explain. So I have these two figures. Again, I'm not the greatest drawer, so don't trust my drawings. Go with only what they're telling you specifically, explicitly. So here they've given us some side measures for both of these figures. And they've also given us some descriptions of the angles using kind of those arc systems here. So if I just look at the angles to start with, I notice that at the bottom of my figure I have two angles that are both single, which, which also means within one figure this angle is equal to this other angle. So these are the same measure, and they're the same measure at these two corresponding sides down in the bottom figure. My upper angles, those, cor those are matching as well to my corresponding in the bottom. Okay, so so far these look like they're congruent. The angles match up. The corresponding angles are congruent. Let's take a look at the sides. So my sides here, I've got five and five. So far, so good. Notice my upper side has two, and this is three. Oh, that's a problem. And then my base here, this bottom one, uh, my base at the top is two, my base at the bottom is eight. That doesn't correspond with this base of nine. So they're not congruent because not all of the corresponding side lengths are congruent. So when I try to match these side lengths up, they're not congruent. So these figures are not congruent with each other. Last example. Let's take a look at triangles A, B, and C, and D, E, and F. And they're telling us right here that they're congruent. So they've already told us that right off the bat. Notice the order of the letters. Again, pay really close attention to the order of the letters. Notice this, this starts with A, and this starts with D. That tells us that angle A and angle D are congruent to each other. So even though these, um, these figures are kind of flipped, angle A and angle D match up with each other. So if I wanted to mark these up, I could say that angle A and angle D are congruent to each other. Notice that the B and the E are in the same place in how I ordered them. That means the B here corresponds with the E here also. So those are congruent to each other. And the C and the F match up. They are corresponding since these are congruent. The C here matches up with the F here. Now D and F might be equal to each other, but I don't know that, so I'm not going to mark it that way. All right. So we have some questions here. What is the side length of EF? So here is EF here, and EF corresponds to BC in my other triangle. So if side length of BC is 8 centimeters, then EF has to be 8 centimeters also, since they told us these two figures are congruent. So the length of side EF is 8 centimeters when I compare corresponding sides. What is the perimeter? of DEF. So we're looking at the whole entire triangle, trying to find the perimeter. Well, if these two figures are exactly the same, whatever the perimeter of this first triangle, ABC, is, that's going to be the same as the perimeter of triangle DEF. So my perimeter, I'm going all the way around the outside, I'm adding side A, B, B, and C, adding the three sides together. 8 plus 8, 16 plus my 3. That gives me a perimeter of 19 
for my second figure for my DEF.